All right, welcome back to Business Today. Now, today we are talking about nuclear power and energy. We're trying to look at Kenya building a nuclear plant and also just focusing and making sure that at least we use um, nuclear energy going forward. And with me is Justus Wabuyabo, who is the CEO, um, Nuclear Power and Energy Agency, that is Nuper, still speaking to us. He was uh, with me earlier before we went for break, and we are still continuing with the conversation. Now, before the break, you had mentioned about um, this whole idea coming in um, during the late Mwai Kibaki's time, 2010. And now, all this time, um, when you look at the years that have gone by, um, what are some of the challenges that have been derailing this um, particular venture, um, even as we look at it as a country? Thank you, Kevin. Uh, Kelvin, uh, um, I think uh, I will say this. Um, the experience that one sees around the world is that uh, from the time a country decides to go nuclear, many countries take between uh, 20 and 30 years before they actually implement it. And the reason for that is uh, a number of reasons. Uh, one of them is that, um, as we mentioned earlier on, the cost of a nuclear power plant is not cheap. Mm. So whenever you decide to go that route, you really have to think hard about the financing. And therefore, you have to go around and, and, and crack your head how you're going to do it. And this is what we've been doing for, 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 for the time. The other thing is that you do not want to have such a serious project which is being run by foreigners and you have no clue what's happening. So one of the things you want to do is that before you even start uh, implementing the project, you want to have your local people, Kenyans, understanding what that program is, is all about and to be part of it from the, the beginning and, and, and throughout the process of implementation so that by the time you commission, we have Kenyans understanding what's happening and can also be in charge of the whole project. The other thing you, want, you, want, you need to do is to have a conversation with Kenyans. As, as you've seen uh, for some time, there have been these concerns about safety. You need to have a conversation with Kenyans and do public participation to get them to understand that these are tried and tested technology and therefore there should be no fears about it. So we've been engaging the Kenyan people and across board and, and a nuclear project is very unique. You do not only engage the people where the project will be cited, but the engagement has to be across board. So that whereas we're going to construct this plant in Kilifi or Kwale, mm -hmm. we must have a conversation with Kenyans all the way from Turkana to Nandi to Marsabit and, and every other part of the country. So we get to have a buy-in of the, the of all Kenyans. And what we've done is that one, we did this through a project called a Strategic Environmental and Social Assessment, where we went around the country to get the views of Kenyans. Uh, once we will start the, uh, when we get the process of uh, construction, we will have to do EIA, which is standard for every project. That will also involve engagement. Um, then you need an appropriate legal framework. So you have to develop a legal framework that can support the nuclear program. Mm -hmm. So this has been attained at least at the national level in that we have an act of parliament, the Nuclear Regulatory Act, which has established a national nu nuclear regulator known as Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority. So in this country, we will actually have two nuclear bodies. Our organization, NUPEA, which is involved in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the implementation of the program, and we have now a national regulator which was created in 2019, the Kenya Nuclear Regulatory Authority, which superintends all issues uh, around nuclear. They will be able to license at nuclear activities and to monitor and check that was anything that is done around nuclear is done according to international standards. Mm -hmm. And those personnel that are working there were actually supported through training through our organization where we link them with other, with other organizations and, and, and bodies and countries where they got training. And we are still training more people to be able to do that. And then the final thing is to align ourselves to the international legal regime. So we have international laws in the form of uh, 
uh, nuclear uh, treaties and conventions, which as a country will have to accede. And this one we are working with the executive and parliament to ensure that they are also uh, acceded to so that they form part of our law to be able to, to guide the development of the nuclear power program mm -hmm. in the country. So basically for this time we've been dealing with the soft issues. We should then be able to start dealing with the hard issues in 2027 when we hope that uh, the president will be able to come and, uh, and, 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 and lay the foundation for the construction of the first nuclear power plant mm -hmm. in this country. All right. And now, to another issue, especially when it comes to safety. You had mentioned about safety. Yes. And when you look at some of the safety, uh, some mitigation measures, especially when it comes to the disposal of um, um, nuclear um, material, um, nuclear fuel and also um, radioactive materials, um, as a country, what needs to happen when this uh, comes into place, when now we create all these things? How do we mitigate against this? Again, that's a very, very uh, interesting question. Uh, the issue of uh, radioactive material uh, has been one of the issues that has raised a lot of concern among, among Kenyans. Uh, uh, everyone asking, how are we going to manage this and, and dispose, dispose of it? Let me say this first of all, that in the development of the nuclear power plant, the issue of management of uh, radioactive material must be part of the conversation. Uh, the experts, the engineers that we're working with and uh, the ones that will be able to come around will tell you that the radioactive material that will result in the operation of the nuclear power plant should be the least of concerns for our people because for the eight years that the plant will be operational, that, that, that waste will be kept within the, the nuclear power plant and will not pose a, 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 any threat. And the, 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 the vendor of this technology, part of the contract that we'll be signing with them will be uh, placing a responsibility on them how to finally manage the, the waste. And the studies that are going on and, and, and now it has actually been determined that we have been able to develop places where the radioactive material can be deposited finally uh, or, 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 or put fine to final rest. So in that regard, it is not something that should be a big worry for us. Mm -hmm. uh, the radioactive waste will be part of the agreement that we'll be able to sign with the vendor so that they will be able to manage that. And remember, a nuclear project must take into account, uh, you must think about it even before you implement it, while you implement it, and it must include the process of decommissioning. So part of the, uh, the, 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 the program will include thinking about how the decommissioning shall be done and what will happen. Mm -hmm. Because as you implement the project, you will have to, de to have a decommissioning fund that will take care of all the issues around that, mm -hmm. including how the waste will actually be taken care of. All right, uh, just as our time is up. So lastly, when you look at um, now embracing uh, the nuclear uh, power, yes. uh, very briefly, what are some of the advantages when it comes to uh, nuclear power as a country? Um, what will it improve, especially in the energy sector? Mm. Thank you very much, Kelvin. And uh, first of all, we've already said that nuclear energy is green. And as the world grapples with the problem of climate change, we need clean energy, and nuclear offers that. Number two, nuclear energy is stable. Mm -hmm. If we are thinking about industrialization, if we are thinking about getting rid of the blackouts that we have now, and, and again, we think nuclear. Number three, nuclear is affordable. The cost of electricity uh, from sources such as um, uh, uh, fossil fuels is very expensive because of the, the, the cost of the, the, the fuel. Nuclear energy is affordable and what it will do is that it will have a ripple effect. By having stable, affordable electricity, you will be able to attract investment and uh, people will come and set up uh, industries here and that will create jobs, will allow us a country 
to do commodities value addition and will be able to assist us to address the problem of foreign forex exchange mm -hmm. balance. Because we will, uh, by doing commodities value addition, we'll spend lost that dollars out of the country. Uh, on the reverse, we'll actually be able to attract dollars in our country. So there are many ripple effects for, 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 this, for this project, and it's a project that will be a game changer for our country. Mm -hmm. And I say this because when you look around the world and you see most of the developed countries, the US, China, uh, Russia, uh, France, uh, Britain, they have all embraced this technology and that has enabled them to advance faster than the countries that don't have this technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, uh, Justice, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us. That is Justice Wabuyabo, who is the CEO Nupair right here in Kenya, speaking to us about the importance of embracing the nuclear uh, kind of technology and also the nuclear energy and what this will do to a developing nation. All right, we move forward.